Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to talk about what you need to know before using AI, also known as artificial intelligence. It's a pretty hot topic right now, and there's a lot of mixed messages out there, I think. Some people are saying that if you're not using it, you're going to fall behind, lose your place in the market. I have a slightly different perspective on that because I don't think that there's one tool that can literally dictate the success of our business. And there's also not a tool that can think the way we think as humans. So before using AI in your marketing strategy, you need to know the facts. So we're going to dive into that today. And there are several points you need to be aware of before using AI to grow your personal brand and business. And this goes along with your marketing strategy as well. Before using AI for content, you need to understand exactly what it is. You may have heard it referred to as chat GPT, chat GPT-3. I think now there's chat GPT-4 um, because of course, as with any type of system or technology, things get upgraded or changed or added to, updated over the course of time. So in addition, it's referred to as artificial intelligence or AI. Chat GPT is a dialogue format of AI. It was created to be more conversational, but for the sake of this post or this, this episode, uh, we're not gonna go into all of the types and levels of AI that are available on the market today. That is a much deeper level of technical understanding than I have. As complicated as AI may be or may seem when used for content generation, it isn't something to fear. I know a lot of people out there are hesitating, um, but it's really not something that you need to fear, but it is something that is important to use caution when approaching it or using it. So what exactly is AI? Artificial intelligence is the use of computer systems to simulate the human mind. There are various hardware that, I should say hardware and software programs involved when it comes to AI. And some of those include Python, Java, R, C++, and Julia. There's others, um, but these are, or I should say there are experts who specialize in AI programming. It's a degree, it's a certification. There is a wealth of information and training and certification type programs available for AI. I don't have any of those. So what we're gonna talk about today is basically based on a little bit of research that I did and my opinion. In addition to, I've you know been talking to other people and reading a lot so that I could inform you to the best of my ability. So how does AI work? Well, in simplified terms, a bot will consume large amounts of data, look for patterns in the data, and then make predictions. So when a human puts in text, a chat bot can pull information from all of that data it's been reviewing and have lifelike exchanges with that human that originally put in the, the question or the subject matter. So you ask a question and it gives you an answer. AI techniques are improving rapidly and can pr produce very realistic text, music, graphics, even images. There's a program out there called, I think it's called Try It On or something like that, that actually does headshots. It's crazy. And they're pretty beautiful. <laughs> now, I don't think they should ever take the place of a regular human photographer, but these are the type of things that are out there and available to us. So what do you need to know before using AI? I've had an opinion about it for a while since it was first introduced, the, that, you know, the anxious skeptic um, in me first thought that, oh, it's amazing. But immediately my mind went to the thought that that means a bot could take my information, the content that I've worked hard to create, that I've used my brain to create and give it to someone else to use. And I may not even know it. I thought about plagiarism and how before that was a big deal, but it may no longer be because of how the data is being discovered and shared for someone else to use. 
And believe me, not everyone is rewording the results produced by AI programs. If you look closely to or at someone that you've been following for a while, if they all of a sudden sound different, chances are they are just copying and pasting content from AI. I don't recommend that. In addition, I thought about how AI was going to take away human jobs. And it reminded me of going to the grocery store or Target or Costco and the self-checkout lanes. Talk about anxiety producing. Every single time I use one of them, something goes wrong. And then I have to wait for the human, one human who is frantically trying to help 10 other people to have time to help me. All the while, the light is flashing and the intercom is saying, help is needed on lane five. <laughs> I love checkout clerks and the service that they provide. Computers shouldn't replace them. I mean, I get it. We're in 2023 and there's so much technology and that's all great. But if humans are losing their jobs for, for the sake of computers, who's going to provide for their families? So that was another thing that really bothered me about artificial intelligence when it first came into the market. But before I felt comfortable addressing the topic of AI, I researched it and I asked my small business attorney, Sherry Andrews, for some legal perspective so that I knew for sure that my opinions were accurate. So with that said, here are a few things to consider before using your AI in your specific business. First of all, if you are trying to grow a personal brand and business, you need to be genuine and authentic. Is AI, is AI going to accurately represent you as the person behind your business? Is it going to represent your tone, your knowledge, your level of professionalism, and your opinions that make up your personal brand? What stops someone else in your niche from asking the same exact question? getting the same response and using the exact same answer in their content because there's multiple platforms out there for AI. So if someone asked the same question and used a different platform, even if they use the same platform, the same information could be regurgitated. And the third thing to ask yourself is, or consider is, are you willing to review the AI outputs and add your own brilliance, your flair, your opinion, your expertise, and your values? Another thing you need to be aware of is that no one in the technology industry is actually verifying the information to monitor for plagiarism. Now, this could hurt you in two ways. First, your valuable content could be given to other people to use. And second, you could be plagiarizing, plagiarizing someone else. No one is monitoring the accuracy of the content shared when you ask a question. Therefore, you could use what was regurgitated by a chatbot and lose your credibility if it's not accurate, which means you'd lose the trust of your community. Since trust determines buying practices, this could ultimately hurt your business in a big way. The other thing is that no one is confirming that the information provided is from an authoritative, reputable, and expert source on the subject matter. So again, this could influence your credibility as an expert in your niche if you aren't carefully checking the information produced by AI. Your eyes need to do a deep review. Don't just skim it. Oh yeah, that sounds good. You need to ensure that what you're putting out there is in alignment with what you believe, what your values are, what your visions and passions are, what your opinions are, to make sure that whatever you're putting out there is authentically and organically equivalent to what you would create on your own. So before using AI, decide why you are using it in the first place. Are you using it to save time because you don't like to write? Or are you using AI because you don't believe you are creative enough to create compelling content and copy? Do you not believe that you have the expert answer and are seeking help in finding it? Or do you simply need a little help with content idea generation? Are you using AI for a quick solution to attract clients? Thinking that the more content that you put out is going to get you more clients. So here's the truth. You are creative and you can write. 
because you are an expert in your niche. All of your experiences have led you right to where you are today. So if you think strategically, you can plan your content in a way that is going to resonate with your people. They're going to understand what you do. And then they're going to be attracted to you. They're going to like, like you and they're going to start to trust you. All of your life and business experiences, along, of course, with God himself, because every gift that we have, every experience we have, has come from him, and the choices that we make alongside that, give you the ability to create and share meaningful and impactful content. I want you to believe in yourself. I don't want you to use AI as a scapegoat. Now, of course, there are times when we lack ideas. There's times when we're overwhelmed and... If that's the situation and you don't feel creative, then use AI for idea generation. But at the same time, get back in touch with your own creativity. Maybe you need to step away from the office for a bit, take a long walk, listen to some music, garden, maybe do some crafts, or ask your community what they want to learn from you. They see you as an expert. And they are depending on you to show up as yourself and share what you know. So the reason you are using AI is gonna determine how you use AI. So before using it and you know, using it and, and, and taking in that the responses that AI is actually creating for you and using it in your content, review all, the ac all of the answers that the chatbot is regurgitating and review them for accuracy and credibility. Make sure that it's aligned with you and what you would normally say. Change words around to put it in your own voice. Rewrite most of the AI content responses that you receive and use the words. And that's going to help you avoid confusion amidst your community because confused people don't buy. So you don't want to confuse your, your readers or your, the people in your community that are consuming your content. You don't want to confuse them by using different terminology, using different language, or expressing your opinions in a new way, because that's what the AI bot said. Ensure that the AI generated response agrees with your values as a business owner, as a personal brand, that it is in alignment with your marketing strategies. Use AI sparingly and do your own research to keep your mind fresh and to keep yourself abreast of all the new information that's in your industry. You know, we see that Alzheimer's, dementia, all of those things are on the rise. If we don't continue to use our brains, what's going to happen to our brains? They're going to turn to mush. So don't just let a computer take over your thinking. Think. And even if you use AI for idea generation, Embrace the fact that you want to keep your brain healthy and active and thinking is going to do that for you. Okay, so, you know, we live in a digital era, right? <laughs> and if you take advantage of AI, but then don't rewrite it in your own voice, you will sound like everyone else in your niche, in your area of expertise. All that time that you've spent to develop your personal brand and market your business is going to be for naught if you sound like everyone else, because you won't stand out. You have to stand out in order for people to memory, in order for you, I should say, to be memorable and recognizable. So if you're not standing out because you sound like everybody else, it's going to be like the, the teacher on Charlie Brown, right? That's not what you want to be. That's not what you want to sound like. So here are some places that you can use AI in your business um, if you choose to use AI. So email marketing. So here's an example. I have an SEO webinar coming up soon. So before creating the post that I was going to write, I wanted to do a little research for myself to test, or I should say, before doing this podcast episode of blog post, I want to do a little research for myself. So since I have this webinar coming up, I thought, okay, I'm going to ask copy.ai to write an email about SEO, about an SEO webinar specifically. So it gener generated a response that included this paragraph, and I'm just going to read this to you. Are you tired of your website being buried on the second or third page of search engine results? 
Do you want to learn how to increase traffic to your website and improve your online presence? If so, we have great news for you. It's pretty accurate for sure, but I had to change it up a bit before I used it. So I did talk about, you know, are you tired of not being ranked on the first page of Google? But it was very important for me to change it up so that it was in my own voice. So if you're on my email list, you will see this email or maybe it already went out, but you'll have seen it or will see it, see it soon. Um, and you can see, like, did it sound like me? Because the only there were only a couple of phrases that I actually pulled from the AI generated response, but it was a great way to just get me started writing that email. So some ways that you can use, or I guess some things, places in your business you can use AI to generate ideas is when you're writing a blog post, uh, sending email marketing campaigns, like the example I just gave you, uh, social media captions. But remember, social media is about bonding with other people, building relationships and engagement. So you want to make sure that if you are using it for social media, it's got to be in alignment with your voice, your values, and your specific perspectives within the area of expertise that you work in. Uh, Pinterest captions is another one, LinkedIn captions, uh, podcast episode content, writing a, a speech, a talk, uh, you know, to demonstrate thought leadership. But again, if you're using AI for ideas for a talk or a speech, when you're talking about um, thought leadership, you better make sure that you agree with everything it's saying, because ultimately someone will ask you a question and you have to be able to defend your answer. You can't just regurgitate what a chatbot said. And then product description is another way that people are using AI. But I make these suggestions loosely as I strongly encourage you to write your own content as often as you can to create your own talks and to write from a place of authenticity and in alignment with your values. So there are a lot of resources for AI um, and you need to know where to find them, right? I needed, I did a little digging on this subject too, and I found a few lists of top AI companies, but there were a few that re were repeated on multiple lists. I'm going to give you a list, um, but the best thing to do, if you're curious, is go over to the show notes and the link will be in the show notes for the blog post so that you can actually see all this um, in person and not have to worry about frantically writing all this down. So it's important to note that prices vary um, between the different companies and the amount of AI that you actually get. Most of the companies offer um, so many words, like say 10,000 per month for a monthly fee. And that set monthly fee varies dramatically between different platforms. Um, you can upgrade from a free account and to a paid account to get more. And you can upgrade from a, an account that has say 10,000 words to an account that has many more thousands of words that you can actually use. So there are several companies that offer a free entry-level plan, and those include copy.ai, which is the one that I have been testing. Uh, there's ContentBot, ScaleNet, Neuro, NeuroFlash, uh, Writer, iParagraph, Simplified, and Smart Copy. So you can read more um, if you go to the show notes. I did provide links to a couple of the articles that I read and that I got some of this information from related to the specific companies. Um, but there are hundreds of these AI companies out there now. So do a Google search to see which one fits you the best. I have a friend who uses Jasper. There's Google, there's Grammarly, uh, any word, writes on it, phrase. And guess what? Even Canva has AI. So you can plug in your, your thought, your topic, your subject matter into Canva, and it'll regenerate that for you. In the... Uh, Show notes, there's also a link to an article by Shelly Welsh uh, in Search Engine Journal. And she lists out the top 10 companies that she recommended for AI. So when using AI, start with a broad scope and then narrow it down. So you ask questions that your community has and then do comparisons. Uh, you can even sometimes get prompts from these companies. I know uh, copy.ai actually sends out an email every now and then with prompts to use, and that's kind of fun. So in summary, before using AI, decide why you were using it, how you want to use it, 
and how much time you're going to invest in rewriting the information so that it's in your voice. It resonates with your soulmate clients and it helps you continue to build your personal brand and grow your business. It's got to fit with your marketing strategy. If you aren't using AI, I don't think you're at risk of losing your credibility or your business or your place in the market, unless you aren't creating content and doing due diligence to be visible in the online space. I've seen people say that um, if you want to be competitive and stay ahead of the curve and top of mind that you have to use AI. I don't think that's true. If you're a good writer and creative and feel confident that you can grow your business without it, you don't need to conform to using AI. You get to choose if and how you use it. It's a tool. And if it helps you save time, and if it helps you do other things that are going to generate clients and income in your business, then use it. But you get to do you. And if you do use it, just use it with integrity while being authentically yourself. I would love to hear from you guys as to whether or not you're using AI or how you're using it and if you found this information helpful. So do me a favor and just find me on social media and tell me how you're using this. I would be so curious to know. I am just like have my toes in the water, so to speak, with using it. But I have to say, I see the value and I see how it can save time, especially if you're in like a creative slump. So I will be probably using it here and there. But again, I like to write. And so I will continue to generate my own content most of the time. So have a great day, everybody. If you enjoyed the episode, please. Share it with other people that you know are in the throes of business and maybe maybe even just starting out and they're like, oh my gosh, how do I write this copy? It may be a good place for them to start. Share the episode with them. And if you would be so kind to leave a rating of you, oh, my heart would be so full. That's how I can continue to grow the show and how I can get great guests on the show as well. So thank you so much for being here. Have a spectacular week and I will see you next time.